power meters are fantastic pieces of equipment. However, there is one huge problem with them, and that is because each one reads differently and some of them vary wildly with their accuracy. So, can power meters actually be relied upon, or are they just really expensive random number generators? Let's discuss. If you're new to cycling, or perhaps just not a tech nerd like me, this is probably a problem you're not really aware of, but it's a problem you need to be aware of so you don't go out and blow all of your cash on a product which doesn't live up to your expectations. Also, if you are new to cycling, it probably means that you haven't subscribed to GCN Tech, so if you're able to, please do. Now then, power meters fit into a number of different categories and work in a number of different ways. You've got pedals, which is the hardest place to measure as there is lots of different input forces and they're susceptible to damage, knocks and wear, but the advantage is that you can swap them easily between bikes. Next, you have cranks and spiders. This isn't as easy to install as pedals, but are often more accurate and robust. As a general rule, the units that were designed to be power meters from the ground up, rather than non-power meter cranks then retrofitted with sensors, tend to be more accurate. Next, you have the hub, which is the easiest place to measure accurately as there are far less complicated input forces, but you have less flexibility in terms of your wheel choice. Being downstream of the pedals and cranks, the power reading can be slightly lower. This is due to drivetrain losses, typically around a couple of watts. They can be super reliable, but are not that common anymore. With regards to pedals and cranks, you can opt for a single-sided version, which is the budget-friendly option as it measures just one leg and then doubles it. But these are far less accurate, and physiologists believe they can lead to an imbalance between the left and right legs because you subconsciously learn to push a little bit harder with a leg that is being measured. That said, they are still useful if you're on a budget and want a good idea of the power that you're producing. Most brands will claim an accuracy of somewhere between plus or minus 1 to 5%. However, that isn't always the case. So much so that for scientific studies, scientists have to be really careful with the power meters they choose to use. And as a general rule, fixed ergs or SRM units are what they tend to use. There's always going to be a small variation between units. However, some can be out by a considerable margin. I mean, we all seem to have that one mate on the group ride who reckons their FTP is 500 watts, but we all know it definitely isn't. Now this problem isn't something new, but it is a problem lots of people, myself included, seem to have forgotten about. And I recently highlighted this in a video where I'm trying to compare heart rate against power, and the two power meters that I was using to record my efforts gave fairly different readings. The power pedals gave a reading of 323 watts, whereas the power crank gave a reading of 342 watts, which is quite a difference over a 10 kilometer climb. On the subject of accuracy, a power meter could be inaccurate, but consistent. So that would mean it say reads 10 to 15 watts higher all of the time, or the slope could be off. This would mean that at generally lower power readings, the power meter could be out by just a couple of watts, but at higher power readings, it could be off by say 10 to 20 watts. Now, this is a problem, especially if you have more than one power meter and you're trying to compare your efforts on different bikes. But a more common issue that we're often asked about is where people are using an indoor smart trainer with an inbuilt power meter to do their efforts and training, and then they head out onto the road using a power meter fitted to their bike, and then wonder why some of their efforts seem increasingly harder or easier than they first had planned. And this is down to the difference in readings between the power meter on your bike and the smart trainer indoors. If you are fortunate enough to have two different power meters, it's important you know how they track against each other. To monitor this, you can dual record. So if you're looking at a smart trainer and an on-bike power meter, you could use two head units to record the two devices separately and ride at varying intensity levels over different periods of time. So you could do 100 watts, 200 watts, 300 watts, 400 watts, and then throw some sprints in the mix as well. That way, you can retrospectively compare how the two power meters stack up against each other. Now, a difference of say two to five watts should be considered comparatively normal. But this isn't always the full picture because we're just looking at recording it indoors. If you were to head outside over some extreme conditions, say riding over cobbles, for example, can make it increasingly difficult for power meters to remain accurate because of all of the different vibrations that are traveling through the bike. Once you're aware of all this stuff and take it into account, you can then make sure that your power meter is more accurate 
compared to your different devices and you're aware of it to make sure your training is as accurate as possible. And it's that price which is really affecting the different readings and accuracy of power meters because there are lots of budget-friendly options out there which have been proven by lots of different people to provide accurate and reliable power meter readings. And there also are some big name brands and expensive power meters out there, which those same people have proven to be fairly inaccurate and inconsistent with their readings. So what can be done about this issue? Well, some power meters can be adjusted using specific software to allow them to update the firmware, zero offset them, or maybe even calibrate them. Now, if you want to get super nerdy about it, you can use some of this software to accurately calibrate your power meter. This is where you hang weights of a known mass off of the cranks, but then in reality, most of us are unlikely to do this. However, you should engage in best practice, and that is to complete a zero offset before every single ride. This is usually done using your head unit, but confusingly, some head units label this as a calibration, but in reality, you're not doing a calibration, it's more like pressing the zero on a set of weighing scales. It's also worth re-zeroing your power meter. If you're doing a long ride, then there is a huge change in temperature. That's because the temperature affects the strain gauges in a significant way. Some power meters, such as those from Power to Max, will have automatic temperature compensation to account for this, but it is just good practice to keep your power meter reading consistently. It's also worth noting that it's important to stay on top of firmware updates so that your power meter is updated and as accurate as possible. In which case, is this problem really as huge as I said it is at the start of this video? Well, it kind of depends on how serious you want to take your training and your analysis of the kind of data that you want to dive into. I mean, for most people, provided your power meter reads consistently, that is going to be more than enough for you to make improvements to your fitness and monitor your training. I mean, if you plan on taking on the Tour de France or you're perhaps someone lucky enough to have two bikes and two power meters and you really want to dive to the next level of data analysis, well, it probably is going to be a bit of a problem for you. So what would I suggest the majority of people do? Well, I think I'd probably suggest you head out and you buy an affordable single-sided power meter because I think that's more than accurate enough to give you like a gateway into power and make fitness improvements. And single-sided power meters represent the best value for money and more than enough for what you actually need to get training with power. But let's be clear, want and need are two very different things because even though I know that a single-sided power meter is all that I need, like many of you out there, I still feel like I want something like this, which is dual-sided and represents the latest in technology. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it interesting to hear a different take on the differences between power meters. And I am keen to hear your thoughts on this, so please do let me know in the comments section down below your experiences with power meters, be that good or bad. And of course, if you want to see more bike tech related videos, much like this one, subscribe to GCN Tech and turn on your notifications so that you don't miss out on future uploads. Right, I'm out of here. See you later.